tip number one, get something that you're interested in. Um, I really like um, Joanna Basford's books. I've got all three of them because she does, um, you know, a lot of nature stuff and I really like that about her books. Uh, she's got an underwater one, she's got um, a garden one and she's got a forest one. So that's the most important. You're not going to want to colour in if you don't like anything about it. Now before you even get started, there's a few things that I'd recommend you doing. Have all of your coloured pencils next to you. I've just got um, one brand in a little container. I have my felt tips, I have a lead pencil, I have an eraser, I have a sharpener. Um, but as you can tell with this sharpener, it does have a catch so it will catch the sharpenings. But obviously it's going to get full after a while. So what I always do is have like a little mug next to me so that now I can empty this into it as I go. If you've got a little bin or something um, that would be good or a plate just somewhere you can put your sharpenings as you go so you don't have to keep stopping and starting. Don't be afraid to mix it up. Here we have a beautiful symmetrical image and what I'm actually going to do is split this image in half and have one half of it nice and bright, uh, nice and, bright and vibrant and the other half I'm going to have uh, all sorts of grey tones. So what all I'm going to do is just rule a line down the middle. Now when you are doing colouring in, it's also good to have things like rulers, um, some black felt tips and it's always good to have a pencil as well so you've got those with you. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to find the midpoint of this drawing which is pretty easy to tell I'm using the middle of the anchor and the middle of the starfish. And I'm just going to do a faint, went a bit crooked at the bottom, but that's okay. Always have an eraser with you as well. Um, I would suggest having multiple erasers. I would probably have some for colouring in and uh, some for your drawing because obviously if you want to erase colours, you will get colour on your eraser. And you don't want that when you go and you want to erase something nice and cleanly. Yep, that's good enough for me. Um, I'm just going to leave that pencil line there so I can erase it after. Okay, so there's two different ways you can use the pencil. You can use the tip. Um, I use that for details. When I am shading or blending or adding different tonal ranges of a pencil, I will use more of the side. Not completely flat, um, but I'll show you what you mean. So if I'm using the tip to create the details, I'm just going to fill in this. It's a small area, so that's why I do want the tip of it. And you will want to make sure your pencil is sharp. I'm not doing anything special for this part apart from just filling it in. I'm not worrying about shading or anything in this area. Okay, so that's using the tip. Now I am going to, there's little dots along here. I'm going to just shade straight over those because I'm going to go in after with one of my fine tips um, and make those black. But I'll just show you how I use it when it's not on the tip. Another important thing when you're doing it on the side, um, don't just go up and down or side to side. You'll see I kind of use some circular motions. That just helps the colour blend a lot nicer. Just making it darker on the outside and lightening as I move towards the center. Now another thing that you can do is layer your colors. So that just means you know it's not one dimensional it gives it a bit more texture it also gives you a color that you won't actually have um, in your colored pencil pack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a yellow and I'm just going to go over this the same pattern or the same same style and it'll just give it a bit more color as you can see there it's made it a little bit more yellow it's just taken the orange off and given a bit more variety to it now one thing you will notice is I'm going from dark to light and what this is called is tones or values and essentially what you're doing is you're getting different values or tones out of one colour. Instead of just pressing hard like I did here, I have one value around the outside. 
um, whereas I have all different values on the inside. Don't be afraid to blend the colours. Obviously, two simple colours have created quite a nice effect in the middle. So don't be afraid to layer your colours. Also, don't be afraid to blend your colours. Um, I'll just do one on one of these leaves to show you. I'm going to grab two different greens and I'm going to go dark to light. So this isn't layering, it's blending. So I'm not going to layer these over the top. I'm just going to go dark to light. Oh, well, I will layer a little bit, but not a lot. So as you can see there, that's using the tonal range. Now I'm going to go light from this side, the tip of the leaf, down the bottom. And this one's a bit more of a vibrant green. And as you can see, I'm going in circular motions. It just helps to blend the colours. If you're not entirely happy with the blend, you just go back in and add some more of this just until you're happy with what you've got. If you go over the lines, don't worry, you either grab your eraser or when you go and add your other colour over the top, that'll fix that one up. And I might do that now actually. Different colour just to make it a bit more interesting keeping with the same tonal range. Now obviously you can see here I'm doing, you know, some pretty realistic colours. You know, greens for the leaves, orange for the starfish. Obviously you can get other colours in those. You don't have to keep it realistic. You can do completely different colours. You might want to use um, only a few colours. You might want to use only pinks and purples. That's what you do. It's completely up to you. And now I'm just going to go add a few details. Uh, yep, 0.5 will be fine for this. And I can actually colour all of, of all of that because this side's going to be black and white and I'm still going to have the same type of details on this starfish. So I don't have to worry about dividing those in half. I might do this one a bit differently though. Just to keep it interesting. You can always add extra lines to it. Um, the stuff that I really like about uh, Joanna's books is if you look at her on YouTube, she's got a few different videos up there. Uh, she talks about collaboration and, you know, she's got the outline for you when you go in and add the colour and you go in and add other details. She really likes to see different um, finished products that we can create with our colour and obviously also with fine tips, adding extra stuff in. So there you go. I really hope these tips help you with your colouring and you know to take it to the next level using those tonal ranges and using the shading and just looking at them a little bit differently and not being afraid to change it up. Uh, if you've got any other questions about colouring uh, please leave me a comment below and I will see if I can help and I'll get back to you. Uh, otherwise I'll see you next time and keep colouring guys. See ya!